this week, a collection of five simple gags you can do with pencils or straws that'll get people to love you. You're buying love. This trip into free beer topia, brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome to the only show where too much head is a bad thing. There's beer, and you get a big head and the foam goes, right. Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, and this week we have a collection of awesome little gags that you can combine to be this awesome little shotgun routine to get people's attention. Maybe get a smile, maybe a girl's phone number, or maybe somebody will punch you. In which case, don't sue us. All right, Adam, Danielle, this is my buddy Robert Strong. He tours all over the freaking world doing huge corporate shows, and he's got some magic to show us. Hey, I'm Robert. Hi, Robert. <laughs> nice I'm to meet Chad. You. Yes, Steven. And Steven, Chad yeah. and Steven, nice to meet you. I like to warm up with a magic trick that uses money. This is exactly what magic should look like. What's the most requested trick in magic? We'll ask Adam. Make Change them. Well, how about hundreds? Think I, big. I go one. Ah, two, yeah. three, four, five. It's real money. It's real money. You can touch it. Beautiful. Can Back we off, take it? <laughs> you can't do it. I need to borrow a pencil. Oh, if only somebody had a number, oh, a two, number pencil. two pencil. Oh, a number two pencil. You were oh, prepared for that. Always prepared. Can I borrow a uh, kiwi? Oh. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Okay, this first trick is just this has been your pockets warm. That's gross. <laughs> this one is disgusting. Do not try this at home because we're trained professionals. It's really gross. Oh, you can inspect it. Mm. Oh, he's gonna touch it. This is your fan base. I know, this this is the grand one. Reach for the pencil. One. See, it's a trick pencil. It How shrinks. How do you do that? Oh, it's yeah. an optical illusion. Yeah, it's an optical illusion. It just looks like it shrinks. Remember the uh, rubber pencil from Elementary School? Whoa! <laughs> you need to get out more. Here. And then here's a cool one: the levitating pencil. What? Oh, ah. Last one, pencil through the hand. I'll make an imaginary X. On three, watch this. One, two, three. Oh, crap, it's gone. What? Oh, stop. All right, Steven and Chad, you guys are the perfect people to learn this on Scam School. Chad, you're a veteran of Scam School. You, of course, have a long background in magic. Thanks. Steven, of course, you're a fan of Scam School, so you're familiar with a lot of the stuff we've learned here before. What I love about this medley is it proves a point about how something, a, a single effect by itself might be very weak, but by shotgunning, by putting a whole bunch of illusions together, the odds are maybe one or two of them in the middle, they'll, people will be able to piece together, but when it's all in succession, you get that little squirt of serotonin where it's just like, you know, oh, surprise, surprise, and, and by the time you try to think back to like, oh, I'm pretty sure I can figure out how he did that, it's too late, you've already seen three more tricks, right? So what I'd like to do is break down the medley that Robert performed and have you guys perform it for me. Sound good? Sounds good. So before we do though, walk me through the subjective experience of watching it because you guys are savvy enough that you probably recognize some of the moves in there. Right, so first trick, I'm blown away by me. I mean, uh, that was awesome. Uh, Without money, the nose. Oh, the money, yeah. The money, yeah, of course, of course. just like changing, and yeah. it was ones, then it was hundreds. And that was for social proof, so that the next thing it would was, seem more impressive. I mean, it was like it was like this this shocker that that it, it grabbed me and was just like, anything you do, I'm, I'm all engaged, and this I'm is, in. This is a good thing, because the, the second set of things sort of requires you to kind of give of your own attention. It requires them to play along a little yeah. bit, right? And that's why in my stage show, I don't want my first routine to ever ask. I don't want to ever require the audience to play along with nothing. I want to be able to do my first routine, and if they're looking or not looking, I want it to work just as well, and I want it to be a big explosion in their face. So on my stage show, it's the, the fire eating. When I'm up close, it's always the human chimney. It's something where it's like you can participate or not participate, it's your option. But then the second one, now it's like you're drawing them in with those tweeners that uh, requires them to sort of play along. Yeah, I mean like when he's doing the pencil trick, I mean at first he doesn't need to think about, wait, how did he do that? And then he does the old, you know, wag, like flippy pencil thing and you're like, oh, that's silly. But then you forget about the last one, you just accept it. Like exactly, it it's, yeah. sort of like, it's sort of like an eight course meal where you keep bringing out these little things and even if you don't like this dish, you're not thinking about the previous dish. And what I liked also was even the cheesy gags, because we live in an information age where a lot of people know a few tricks. And people always say, well, what if I'm doing a scam school trick and somebody's seen it before? And my answer is always like, then move on to another one. If you know all 250 episodes that we've taught so far, then you have more information than they do, so right. you'll be able to fool them. And that's like, a, it's a microcosm of that exact experience. And the concept is kind of like flooding. Uh, there's something I call the sorority effect. If you see 15 women all dressed up walking towards you, you tend to take the average of the best part of all their different features. 
And then you don't realize that one's got a horse face, one's got buck teeth, one's got, you know, terrible legs, whatever. What happens is like, you're just flooded with all this information and you kind of remember the best part. You're like, I want to hang with them. So I'm flooding with stuff and you're not thinking that one was weak and that one was, uh, I figured out and that one was kind of off. What you're doing is you're like, oh my God, my brain's like, Lit up, with, like you said, serotonin. Overloaded. Overloaded. Yeah. Overloaded. Right. No, that's great. Okay, so let's so break it down. Why crappy overloaded? tricks makes one great experience? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we want to call the episode that, but I part of me just wants that to be the title. It's going to be in brackets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is really disgusting. Do not try this at home. I'm a trained professional. It's really gross. So I'll do it, and then I'll explain, break it down. All right. So for this one, I got you guys pencils, please. Okay. What you want to do is you want to grab it with your... Uh, uh, pinching fingers, and the important thing is to make a fist with the other fingers and get them out of the way so that, that the uh, the audience can see the rest of the pencil. If you're right-handed, hold your left hand. Okay, good. Good. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your other hand, you're gonna slide it up the pencil to give the illusion going up the nose, but if you do it exactly like I did, it will fool no one. So the pencil actually has to disappear behind your wrist, so you rotate your hand 90 degrees, and you go up. So it goes right behind your wrist. Uh, the pencils are kind of dull, so you don't actually stab your own wrist. That's good. Right. And so the illusion is, is and notice I tip my head back, because if you were to really shove a pencil in your oh, nose, you wouldn't just stand good. there. you go, and it, it's easy okay, to so this, in the mirror. So if you just do this. Yeah, that's kind of not actually put in my nose. <laughs> this so stops it from going up your nose. That's not so good. OK, so it's stopping it. Using my, and then my am I also hiding here. the tip? Yeah, or you're, you're hiding the ferrule and like, the eraser like part on of there. It? Yeah, and only okay, use yeah. this finger. Don't use your middle finger, too. Okay. What it does is it gets out of the way to help imp improve the illusion. So, And the and one then, other thing as well is you're going to want to angle it so that the words are inside towards you. Yeah, because they don't see the words uh, sliding up. Oh, yeah, that would be bad. And then, then uh, making it come out of your mouth, you just grip it with your teeth, and it looks like this. I notice the sound. I mean, if a pencil goes up your nose, it makes some noise. Like that. Got and it. once you've got the basics down, it can be pencil in the ear, it can be pencil out the nose, it can be into the eye socket, ah! Like that, I mean, it can okay. make an orifice. All right, got it. practice, show us, go. You guys just keep on doing it. Uh, that looks way good. <laughs> now, now the pencil actually has to come out of the mouth relatively quickly because they're going right. to figure out where it is. See, you can't see it from my own perspective. I guess, like, would it help to practice in a mirror? Or? Yes. Practice actually, in a mirror. even better than practicing in front of a mirror because the thing is, with a mirror, you can fool yourself by setting up the angle or by blinking at the right time or whatever. But even better is to record yourself on the iPhone. Just set it up and then practice it for that. Then you can actually see it the way they're going to experience it. You know what's awesome? Being lazy. Wait, what's also awesome is being dumb. Thanks to Squarespace, I get to be both. I don't have to know a single lick of HTML. I don't have to know how to program no CSS wizardry. And still, I can have a badass looking blog portfolio or any other kind of website thanks to the new Squarespace. Squarespace 6 is rolling out right now, and it's going to make you look totally badass. They got brand new templates. They got an easy drag and drop interface. You can put your social media widgets in there. They even make it super easy to import your blog from that other crap of your service, who I can't even remember their names. That's how bad they are. Look, head on over to Squarespace and start your free two-week trial. They ain't gonna ask you for a credit card or nothing. You can even make a joke site. Go ahead and make mineisalazydouche.squarespace.com. You can set it up. You can put pictures of me, Photoshop, looking like a big old douche, a dumbass. Go ahead and Photoshop my face on history's greatest a-holes, and then two weeks, they're not going to ask you for any cash, but you know what? Sooner or later, you're going to need a good looking website that's super easy. And when you do, I want you to sign up at Squarespace and use promo code SCAMSCHOOL8. Not only will that get you 10% off your first purchase, which by the way, think about this. If you were to spend a trillion dollars at Squarespace, that promo code would save you a hundred billion dollars. How great is that? But most importantly, it'll be letting them know that it's Scam School that's keeping them in business. Go on out there, make us look good, and make me look like a douche. Okay, the next one is the shrinking pencil. I can't really explain how it works. It is an optical illusion. When you hand it left, right, left, right, left, right, and then you slow down, it appears to grow. The one thing I know about this is that when you start it, you want to keep your fingertips out here, and you just grab it, and basically, you want this left, motion. Left, right, left, right, exactly. And then you keep bringing your fingers in closer and closer and closer so that you get that. And then it grows that. back out. And then another important detail, don't use a particularly sharp pencil or a pen that's open on this one, because yeah, you'll, you'll get a set this a few times. This is oh, definitely heaven. one that works as well with a cigarette, because that's the way I've learned it as well. So it's just, and what you do is hand left, right, left, right, and you can see yourself. If you can see it, the audience can see it. And then it grows. And my little tip at the end of this is when it grows, I get really big eyes like, whoa, that was full. 
practicing is is what will make this Yeah, you get perfect. it down. All right, so this one you guys are both gonna have to put a little more effort into. Right. What's next? Next is the uh, rubber pencil. Most kids like in third grade learn this. The trick is to hold it gently, or not firmly, and off center. When you lift your hand up and down, you can see it looking like rubber. Yeah, uh, I do it you just long it. enough that people see it, and then I, I cut it and move right on. Well, and time. I noticed that you also, and this is what's interesting, if you acknowledge what they're thinking, you can get away with some really cheesy magic by saying, and of course, you all know the old rubber pencil trick, and by saying that, you inoculate their reaction. Uh, then the next one was a levitating pencil. So I place it in my hand, I hold my own wrist, and the, the audience doesn't see the uh, index finger coming up. So there's a concept in Magic calling big motion covers small motion. Small motion is this, but the big motion is this. So when you do them both at the same time, the small motion is hidden behind the big motion. And, and on this one, I'm on the fence about keeping it a secret and moving on or exposing it. And uh, sometimes I just feel like getting that aha moment, that laugh moment, where you kind of, your eyes roll back and it's like fun so that you get two punches. There's one punch, two punches. And I guess that's really, you got to do a read on the audience because obviously if you get as far as that and then it's floating there and people go, holy crap, he's a wizard. You walk away. Then yes, then you and <laughs> ask for money. Drinks. Yes. So Penn and Teller have an interesting philosophy. Penn once said that, you know, as Jim Steinmeier said, uh, magicians are guarding an empty vault, right? The, the actual method is almost always disappointing. But he says in the cases where the method is better than the, than the mystery, then absolutely give them the method. And that's what I do when I perform the human chimney. I always perform the human chimney. It gets a good aha moment. Everyone thinks that I'm just inhaling the smoke, but then I explain the actual mystery. The, to me, the mystery of the science of how it draws the water vapor out of your lungs, and I get them to try it. And to me, that is a much more interesting and much bigger presentation. There is one thing that's very important though, is to remember that within the secrets is the power. So you always have to think very carefully on whether it's better to let them in on your side or whether it's better to let them have the mystery. Whichever and, is better is what you want to let them And, and sometimes there's a balance. Sometimes you, you fool them and you, you end. Sometimes you fool them, you expose something, fool them more. And then there's this like ability because you've just shared with them. Literally, everyone has the secret to every magic trick you could possibly do in their pocket. Your goal is to be so likable, so interesting, and give them so much that they'd rather have the mystery than have the answer. Yeah, I think if you do five tricks and you share one, I think that increases your likability. Absolutely. All right, was there one more that we had? Yeah, there was one more, and then a uh, pencil through the hand. So it goes right through my hand. Now for this one, it's all about the misdirection. I don't say it's the disappearing pencil trick. If you say that's a disappearing pencil trick, they see that because they're watching the pencil. I want them to watch the skin open up, the pencil will slide through it, then close up behind, and only a little bit of blood will splatter on the audience. And, so, and it's fine to set up that expectation, to full on say that that's what's gonna happen. Let the them expect that. The pencil's gonna go right through my hand through the imaginary X on the count of three. One, two, three. It's gone. So that's just a matter of having ears. Right? <laughs> not too much hair, not There's too somebody glasses. who doesn't have ears, yeah. who's just like, screw you, Skip. <laughs> You're gonna get one eight full email. <laughs> and then it's just a matter of practicing sliding behind the pencil. That pencil has a balance point. You slide too far, it's gonna tip back. Too, too uh, little, it's gonna tip forward. So just practice putting it there and leaving it there. So this is a concept that we uh, did in our Pure Mess Direction episode of Scam School, where we used that as a ruse in order to get you to vanish something from your hand right. uh, from the Michael Amara Icebreaker series. But uh, I love that it's a totally different application for it, but relies on the same principle. Steven, real quick, yeah. what I'm seeing you do yeah. is go one, two, and the third one looks three. Terrible. Right. So what you, what, when I, whenever I do this, I actually put it behind the ear every single time. I actually okay. go one, two, and then it's easy to leave it on the third one. Okay. Two points is people look where your eyes are, so I'm looking at the spot, I'm not following the pencil. So I'm looking at that spot. So I put it behind the ear one, put it behind the ear two, put it behind the ear, leave it three, gone. And my reaction of gone is pretty cool. And then if I want to expose it, I just go, I can't hear you. And right. I just, I point right at it. And then you get another laugh. You think that was pretty amazing? Uh, you think that was, yeah, there you go. Dude, that was fantastic. The narcissist pencil trick. Let's go give it up for Robert Sprague, dude. That was Woo! awesome. Robert, go! First and foremost, we want to thank Robert Strong for slumming with us. You can see more of his stuff over at strongentertainment.com. And keep in mind, when you're doing these tricks, that the quality of each individual component is not as important as the overall arc of the performance. If you can shotgun them with enough gags and enough succession, they'll have a good time. And that's all any of this is really about, right? 
So I want to hear about your success stories and failure stories. So hit us up at the forums over at scamschool.tv where you can see all of our episodes right back to episode one. That's like 250 by now. And don't forget that Scam School book two and book one are available right now on iTunes and on the Amazon Kindle bookstore. They are legitimately the greatest things I've ever created. If you feel like you owe a debt to Scam School, it's time to collect. Buy both the books, please. And also give me a back rub. Don't forget that if you want to suggest your favorite bar scam, write me directly at brianrevision3.com and join us next week because we are going to learn how to cure bronchitis with a nickel, a pencil, and some silly string. It's all coming up on next week's Scam School. Ah, you guys got floppy pencils. <laughs> floppy wood, you would nah, <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, nicely played, sir.